Hi everyone. Welcome to the Reluctant Sisters podcast. My name is Adrian. I am the Reluctant Knitter. This is a totally random podcast about knitting mostly and uh, some crocheting and sometimes some other crafts. So um, the reason why I say it's random is because I totally wanted it to be every two weeks, but um, uh, clearly I can't maintain that. So it's been a while since I last saw you. So welcome um, back. Any returning viewers, thank you so much for not forgetting about me. And any new viewers checking me out for the first time, I hope that you like this podcast. Uh, where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram as The Reluctant Knitter, on Ravelry as Reluctant Knitter with no E in the knitter. And we also have a podcast group, The Reluctant Sisters Podcast Group. Uh, we had a cow going on, which has just ended. I have to pick a winner, which I will do so on this um, episode. Um, and I was thinking about possibly doing another um, knit along. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I have kind of an idea, but we could talk about that um, in a minute. How the heck are ya? Um, things have been kind of crazy. So even before everything that um, has been going on, which everybody knows about, uh, my work schedule has been kind of wild. So I own my own business. I do uh, billing for oral surgeons. And so it's been like kind of busy. So that's why I hadn't podcasted in a while. And then I was going to podcast last week because, hey, we're not doing anything, right? We're just hanging out. And then I just really just didn't want to. So I didn't. I, mean, I just wasn't feeling the motivation to do it. But that's neither here nor there. I am here now. So like I mentioned, we have a cowl that just ended. It was the cold weather cowl and it was basically anything that you wear in the cold weather, excluding socks, knit or crochet or whatever. So we had 112 entries. I did, um, I didn't do like an FO and a chatter thread. I just did one thread, which I think worked out really nicely. We did have a lot of projects in there. Um, so I just picked from the one thread. So the winner dun, 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 is Linda. So Linda, her Ravelry name is L-M-E-C-O-L-L. -L. I believe that she has won before. I know that I have met her before at uh, Rhinebeck. So congratulations, Linda. She um, knit the No Worries hat by Stephanie Lotvin. So um, I think that was kind of a fitting project to win. The No Worries hat where uh, everyone has something to worry about, even especially now. So yeah, very good. Congratulations, Linda. I feel like you've won before. Um, I'm sure we've sent you something before, but please contact me through Ravelry um, with your address. Uh, so I can send that out to you. The prize, the prize was this. So this is a skein of Ancient Arts yarn and um, it's 100% superwash BFL. It's a four ply fingering weight. The colorway is cherry custard. You also won this Notions pouch sewed by my sister Sarah and you also won some stitch markers. So the first one is a progress keeper it's a little plastic blue flower. I was going to call it a heart, but it's not a heart. And then these little stitch marks, you, which you actually might have already gotten one from me at Rhinebeck. But anyway, I had some left over. I made these little stitch markers. I don't know if you can. These are very hard to hold up. But anyway, there's three of them. So that's what you won. So get in touch with me. And thank you so much for everyone who participated. Um, I was thinking of doing another cal, um, maybe, uh, hmm, what could we call it? The homebound Mal make along, uh, or we could do it the social distancing now, or we, <laughs> cause we're all stuck at home. So I was thinking about doing that and it would be like an indefinite knit along, uh, and then whenever to celebrate the ending of this quarantine, so it's probably going to be months, but anyway, we could uh, close the thread and then pick a winner for that. But uh, let me know what you think. I don't know. I, I didn't really want to call it the COVID cow or the coronavirus cow because I don't know. I just feel like I know that people want to try to lighten the mood and everything, which which I'm all for too and maintaining a positive attitude. But I feel like calling it that kind of makes it like I'm like I'm not really giving it the weight that it deserves because this is a very crazy time which we can talk about in real talk later. 
and I know some people don't really want to hear a lot about it so I'll save that for the end so if that's not what you want to hear about but the, that's why I don't I don't really want to call it that so give me some suggestions the homebound mal or the quarantine mount no I think quarantine sounds like a little bit quarantine cow would sound good but I just I don't think so maybe social distancing mal give me some suggestions man down below I read my comments um I try really hard to stay on top of those and also all of my show notes will be down below so that's that so congratulations, Linda. Uh, what I'm wearing, I am wearing the Zilver shawl. Uh, this is by uh, Lisa Much. I do have a project page for it. So I have linked that in the show notes. And it is knit out of um, Volen Vine yarns in the Vol excuse me, the Volca base in the colorway is Ballroom Blitz. Um, I do know that this was a colorway that was um, dyed up to be like a, do I have that project bag out? I don't think I do. It went with a project bag. It was like a kit and then it came with a stitch marker. So I do think that maybe she dyed it again, but then I think she might've changed the name on it, but it was called Ballroom Blitz for sure when I bought it. So that's what I'm wearing. It's a one skein um, shawl and it was actually really nice to knit. It was very easy. It was kind of vanilla. And then it has like different, there's a picture, there's a better picture on my project page, but it has like different um, ridges. There's like, you know, two ridge, then it goes three or four or something like that. I can't remember. I knit it quite a while ago, but that's what I'm wearing. So uh, I guess moving right along, I have an F. Oh, guys, what? I'm not sure I had an F.O. the last podcast, but I have an F.O. now. This is the Ola shawl by Anna Johanna. I think that's how you say it. I really liked knitting this. Um, so it's not a shawl. It's a wrap, I guess. But I think it's just called Ola. I don't think it's like called wrap or shawl or anything. But um, it is a wrap. It's a rectangular um, wrap. And it is knit with a, I think the pattern calls for a fingering weight held with mohair and then you drop the fingering weight and then you do just a mohair lace section on it. Um, I did it, I think that was, that was a lace weight. So um, let me tell you, let me tell you what I knit this out of. Um, I knit this out of Knit Picks yarn. So the, the um, lace weight is um, Knit Picks Alpaca Cloud in the Alfred colorway. It's a 100% baby alpaca. And the lace weight is a loft. I think it's, um, let me see here, 72% kid mohair, 28% silk in the silver colorway. Um, I didn't really, it takes a lot of energy for me to like write down or figure out or keep track of exactly how much I've used. I know that it's helpful for project pages and I rely on project pages sometimes to decide whether or not I have enough yarn. Um, so I'm actually really going to try to make a point, um, because it is knit with a different weight, I think, than the pattern. The pattern, I think, like I said, calls for fingering. And I did rely on a project page that used lace weight. So I'd like to, um, I'd like to do the same and try to make sure that other people who want to knit it will know exactly how much I use. So I'm really going to try, um, to figure out how much I really used of it, um, for other people's benefit. But anyway, I'm going to take this off. And show you I didn't really want to wear it on the podcast because it is actually knit for a friend um, but maybe I will just put it on so there it is again and let's see so um yeah you could wear it a bunch of different ways I'm sure but it's just like soft and fluffy oh it's actually very nice and I know it's gonna be warm too so even though it's a lightweight it's gonna be nice and warm and I just I really love the way that it looked uh, so that's that. That's for a friend who I don't know when I'm going to be able to give it to if I can't be in contact. <laughs> so I have all of the usual whips. I'm still working on all of the whips that I was working on my last podcast. I am going to talk about all of them, even though one of them I don't think that I worked on since. Um, but uh, I will talk about all of them because I know it's been a while since I podcasted. So it's not like you watched this last week and heard me ramble on about it. Um, okay, so the first one I will show you is this, um, 
It's the Fireside Gingham Afghan by Donna Baranti. You can get the pattern for free through Knit Picks. Um, I did buy the kit through Knit Picks for it, so it was really easy um, to just get started on it. It is a crocheted pattern. I don't know if I said that or if I said knit. It's crocheted, and I haven't worked on it, I don't think, since the last podcast. Um, so, because I've been really trying to finish this Ola wrap. Um, let me see. Where are we? Okay. So it is a buffalo plaid afghan. It's going to be just like a twin size, so it's not very big, but it'll be perfect for like, you know, a lap blanket on the couch or whatever. I'm not really sure. I think, I think this was, so maybe I put like four rows on it since I last showed you guys uh, that stitch marker there, that progress keeper. It's a pepperoni pizza by Super Super Miniatures. Um... So yeah, okay, so let me talk about the yarn. I'm like, what else do I say about this? Duh, I remember how to podcast. I'm crocheting this with a size F hook. I have never crocheted it in my life before, which isn't really true. Um, This is the first project that I, I forgot to tell you guys. I'm coming to you from Connecticut, where I live with my husband, Sean, and our great Dane, Elizabeth Bennett, who is burping in my face. Um, So this is the first project that I, crochet, that I started crocheting. I did, since crochet is stuffy, um, but yeah, so this is a hook, F size, F hook. And I am knitting this out of Knit Picks Brava Sport Weight in three colors. So the first one is wine, the second one is red, and the third one is black. So this is just 100% acrylic sport weight. Um, yeah, that I got in the kit, which was, which was good. So yeah. The kit also came with the pattern for the pillow and enough yarn to knit the pillow uh, or crochet the pillow. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Um, I haven't decided yet. I guess I have to get going on this if I'm going to. I don't have to do anything I don't want to. I could totally start the pillow or something else if I wanted to. I actually really, really love this. It is a mindless kind of crochet. I'm not proficient enough in crochet to crochet without looking like I am with knitting. Um... But it is mindless enough where I can absolutely listen at least to a show or listen to a podcast or something while doing it. Um, so, yeah, there you go. My next whip is my sock head slouch hat by Kelly McClure. So this is in a project bag uh, sewed by my sister, Sarah. All my project bags are either sewn by my sister, Sarah, or they are tote bags. So this is the Sockhead Slouch Hat. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with it. I'm not sure how much I've knitted on since the last podcast. Maybe this is where I was. I'm going to start changing, moving the um, progress keepers like on the podcast right after I talk about it. Because I feel like sometimes I pick up the project and forget to move the progress keeper to show you where I was. But this progress keeper is um, a little pet rock by Charmed and Dangerous. I love her. Um, progress keepers so cute this is um being knit out of Mondim yarn it's 100 portuguese wool and fingering weight and the color is 205 i don't think that it, i don't know if it has an actual color name i am knitting this on 16 inch fixed chow goo circulars in a u.s size 2.5 or 3.0 millimeter my beginning of round stitch marker is this little top octopus octopus stitch marker this is by bead passion the bead passion i've only purchased ones from them on etsy um but i really like their stuff and it's very affordable and it's so cute i don't know if you can oh so cute um that's it so i'm knitting this to pattern so i think it's a four inch brim it's a free pattern four inches of the brim nine inches of the of the cr crown i guess before you do the crown decreases so and it's just like a mindless knit. I was knitting this. I was taking this with me when I would go to New York. I would go to New York twice a month, New York City, um, twice a month to do some volunteer work. And I would knit this on the train, but I have not gone to New York City. So, for obvious reasons. Next. This is also living in a project bag. Sewed by my sister, Sarah. This was for Rhinebeck. She did this for our little Rhinebeck trip. So, it was very very cute. This is just vanilla socks. I know, you know what? See, and I said I was going to change the progress keeper after I started talking, after I finished talking about it, and I didn't. So I'm going to do that now. <sighs> I can't 
can't even do things that I said I was going to do two seconds ago. There we go. All right. Back to this. These are vanilla socks for my husband. I actually have made some progress on this. I'm just a couple of inch, an inch or so away from the heel. Um, I do afterthought heel on all of my socks, really, but definitely self-striping socks. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just about to put the waist yarn in for the heel. It's not a true afterthought. Um, so this is out of Perfect Sock. Self-striping mustache yarns, perfect sock. It's an OCD. So it's two perfectly matched half skeins twisted together. This is fingering weight. It's 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon and um, Dark Side of the Moon is the colorway. So I'm knitting these two at a time. Toe up on 40 inch fixed Chow Goo Circulars, US size one, 2.25 millimeter. Um, magic Loop, I think, did I say that? That's my general sock recipe. I do I do like to use DPNs and I do have a, a pair of nine inch circulars. Nine inch circulars aren't my favorite, but I've been known to do them just, you know, for fun to change it up. But this is my general. I do a Judy's Magic Cast On for the toe. I like, I prefer a rounded toe. So I do a rounded toe, afterthought heel, two by two rib um, when I do the cuff. I like a twisted rib as well. And um, I generally make the leg as long as the foot. So I put the waist yarn in and then I just knit until I'm two inches away from the toe and then I do my cuff, two inch cuff. So yeah, I'm just plugging away on this a little bit. Um, I have a little, it, until I put my waist yarn in to indicate the front and the back, I have a little stitch marker. It's a Great Dane Merle. That's the color that my dog is, Merle. So it's like gray with black spots. And this is from Wee Ones. Wee Ones polymer clay stitch markers. I don't know if they're on. Are they on Etsy? I'm not really sure. I got these at um, New England Fiber Festival, I think, the first and only year I'd ever been there. So um, I'm not sure if she has an Etsy shop or if she has an online like a website or what. But it's called Wee Ones. And I know she's been at Rhinebeck. I saw her at Rhinebeck last year. <sighs> last whip. I am really making some good progress on this. I'm really enjoying knitting on it. It is in my proud to be a knitter tote bag. It is my All of the Lights Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. I'm really, really enjoying this. So I am, I think, about an inch away from... I don't want to say finishing the body because I actually haven't looked ahead in the pattern. If there's like ribbing on the bottom, I don't really know. But I have an inch before I'm done with this section of the pattern. Um, so I'm really excited about that. It's just an open front cardigan. It's cabled all over. I'm really loving this. Don't look too hard at it because I totally messed up on the back cable. Um, I'm 100% not pulling back to fix it. And, um, I mean, it is what it is. I don't think probably knitters would notice that there's something off about it. Like, is that really how the pattern is supposed to go? But it's not like a mistake in the sense like that cable is done incorrectly. The cable's done correctly. It's just, I did the wrong pattern of cable. So I guess I will show you because this is all about sharing our wins and our successes and our failures. It's not really a failure. So I'm not really sure if you can see it. Um, if I'm holding it up enough, but they're supposed to go a certain way the whole way down. And then I screwed up and I did the wrong, the wrong cable on the wrong side. So then it kind of opens up in like a hole right here. And then I corrected it on the way down and, um, and you know, I don't think it really matters. And the reason why is because it's kind of in the middle. It's like kind of in the middle of the back. I'm going to see if I can stand up. It's kind of in the middle of the back so it's kind of like it's not really like that big of a deal like yes you can tell it's off but like I don't think it really is that big of a deal so please tell me it's not that big of a deal <laughs> um but yeah I mean if you can see all of these, you can see all these cables and texture uh I'm not ripping it back it is what it is it's a design feature so yeah 
Um, it also has pockets, which I have put the pocket holes in. Yeah, and then I just have to do the sleeves, man. So I have all of my little stitch markers. These are cocoa knit stitch markers, all like uh, measuring out my repeats. I'm knitting these on my Licka interchangeables. These are wooden needles. I really adore them. Um, it's my second set of interchangeables. I would love to get a set of Chowgu interchangeables, but so um, anyway, it's US size six, four millimeter. The cable is a little stiff for me. I do prefer um, a little bit of a, a looser kind of malleable cable, um, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's just like sometimes you have to like turn it around like anyway. Um, and I am doing all of this except this one because this is a larger cable on the back. Can you see that? Yeah, um, I'm doing all of them without cable needle that's the only one I'm using a cable needle for so it's really not too bad if you do want to do this but you have a hard time with cable needles if you could learn how to do it without a cable needle it definitely makes it go a lot faster um oh what I'm gonna get out of you'd probably like to know that this is Miss Babs oh shoot I don't have the thingy so this is a Miss Babs Yowza it's DK weight yarn it's 100% superwash merino and the colorway is Mother Earth. I did get this at Rhinebeck last year. Yeah, 2019. Um, it was in like a big skein. It was a double, like a double. So it's eight ounces, I guess. I don't really know. Eight ounces, 560 yards to eight ounces. I really love the feel of this yarn. It just feels really nice. I'm really happy to, I'm really, I really am enjoying this knit. Um, there are a lot of charts and um, obviously so. There's a lot of charts. So sometimes, like it wasn't time out for a little bit just because I was just, I, I don't know, I think I got in my own head that like, oh, I can't really pick it up and just knit a little bit on it because it's just so you have to kind of get into it and get your teeth into it. Um, but that's really not the case. I don't know why I was so intimidated. I mean, I guess it can be intimidating, but um, yeah, I'm really just enjoying knitting on it. So once you kind of get your charts and you have to be really organized. So how I'm using, what I'm doing, I normally don't do paper patterns. Um, I like to do them digitally, but this one I did print it out and I do have um, highlighter tape. So I'm like marking the lines that I'm on. Um, and I do have to make sure, so I do, I do, I do like to end on a right side, on a wrong side row. So like I knit the right side, then knit back the wrong side. Cause I was alternating skeins. I'm now on my last skein, so I'm not gonna alternate anymore. Um, because I only got one, you can't alternate one. But anyway, because I was alternating skeins, I didn't want to pick it up and have one of the skeins on one, like one of the working yarns on one side of the project and one of the working yarns on the other side of the project, because then I wouldn't be able to remember if I was on the back side or the front side. So I did, I did have to finish on a, you know, I did have to pick it up and at least multiples of two rows. Um, but now it's not that big of a deal, I guess. Um, so I have highlighter tape to mark my rows on all my charts. So you do kind of have to be like a little bit organized. Um, I did a lot of notes on the pattern with pencils so I could like keep track of certain things. So yeah, but I think I'm in the home stretch on this and I'm really excited. Um, I'm really excited about that. That's it for my whips. Um, yeah, so I have some procurements. I bought these a while ago and these have been on hold. Um, so yeah, so one of them I'm going to show is a prize that I won. I won this from the D heart house podcast with Alicia. Um, I really am enjoying her podcast. She is podcasting from, um, Washington state. She is a math professor, um, at a college. Um, and she had like, I think it was a two, was it 200 subscriber giveaway, I think. So I entered in her 200 subscriber giveaway and I won. So if you haven't checked her out yet, please go check her out. She's doing like a sock cowl right now too, where she made, um, she designed a sock and then, um, and then is doing a knit along with it. Um, so check her out. Cause I, I really enjoy her podcast. She also was before this whole, um, social distancing thing. I don't, I don't know if she stopped, but she hasn't talked about it in a minute, but, um, going to, 
um, state parks. They were like her and her husband and her dog were going to all these different state parks and she would talk about the state parks, which is really cool. My sister Amy is going to be moving back to Washington state soon. So I find that very informative because when I go out to visit, I would love to visit some of these state parks and go hiking. Um, so I really like that about her and yeah, so go check her out. But anyway, she uh, sewed a project bag. So this was the prize. It's very cute. I really like it. And then she has like a nice little tag on it, D Heart House Creations. And uh, a skein of yarn. So it's a skein of Knit Picks, Stroll Fingering. Um, and the Aloha hand painted. So it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. 462 yards to 100 grams. So yeah, so it kind of goes together. So I'm excited. I don't, I, I don't win a lot of stuff. I always say, people always say, I never win anything. Um, but I've won some things in the past. So, but it's for always, it's always fun to win. Um, next on my procurements, my sister Sarah sewed me a double point needle holder. I love this. I love it. I haven't used double point needles since I got the holder, so I haven't really had the opportunity to like open it up, but it has a nice long tie on it. So you just roll it up and then tie it up. It's this amazing real life fruit fabric. I seriously love it. I seriously love it. It's so cool. Um, okay. So the inside of it has like a flap. And then it just has spaces for my double points. So I'll just fold it up so I can show you. It doesn't have like, um, you know, like labels or anything, um, but I do just have them all together. And all of these um, have the, you know, have the size on them. So it's not, you know, it's fine. So I don't need, yeah, I don't need labels. <laughs> so yeah, I love it. It's my fave. And I really been wanting one. I had been putting all of my double point needles, I was keeping them in their container, whatever their, whatever it was packaging that they were coming in and I was using a pencil case for them, which actually worked really well. Um, but I'm happy to have a case. So thanks, Sarah. Just tie this back up again. Okay, so then I also purchased some procurements. Not everything was gifts. And uh, when I went on, so I bought the yarn for this but since my last podcast. So that was a procurement. And then I also bought some Felici. So can we just talk about the price of Felici went up? Now, after I got this, it does say special reserve. So I'm wondering if it went up or if it's like a special reserve thing. But also like a week or two after I bought it, the price went down. So I was a little irritated about that. So I got four skeins of Felici, two each. The first one is Drama Club. I like Felici. Um, I do have some gripes with it. I do feel like sometimes there is some color staining on like some of the stripes. It'll have like a, like a speckle of the, one of the other colors um also a lot of times in the striping it two of the colors are very very similar to each other so that's like not my favorite about the Felici but it's affordable I like the way that it feels and I do like their color you know like their colors together um the stripes that they do so I've I've bought Felici in the past and I do like it um, so yeah, 75% super, superwash merino and 25% nylon. So this is Drama Club. And then I bought this for my husband, which I really love. It is called Rugby Player. So it's like teals and oranges and blues. Um, he has a lot of, he has a lot of striped socks and he has a lot of blues and grays. So sometimes it's hard. I do think he has a pair of green. Green is one of his favorite, is his favorite color. So but sometimes it's hard to um, find lots of different variety, but I really love this one and he really, really likes it too. So I'm happy about that. So yeah, so that's that. I think that's all of my procurements. What I'm watching knitting. I'm watching Peach and Paige podcast 
with JJ. I don't know if I've mentioned that on another podcast before, um, but I've been watching her. She's in Australia. I just like hearing people with different accents. Um, I do like her podcast. She does a lot of crochet and she does her own crochet designs. So she does have patterns for sale on Etsy. Um, so that's cool. It's, it's kind of the only like heavy crochet podcast that I watch since I'm not a crocheter. Um, but I really like her designs and, uh, I like her. So yeah. So go check it out. If you have any podcasts that you are watching, I like to feature podcasts that have less than 500 subscribers. Try to get a little more visibility for them. I know sometimes it's hard to kind of break through and sometimes you feel like, what am I doing this for or whatever. But um, if you have a podcast that's lesser known, you yourself have one or you uh, watch podcasts that are a little bit lesser known, please make sure to suggest them to me. I would love to check them out. I'd love to subscribe, get some likes for them and get a little bit more exposure for them. So that's what I've been doing. I've, I also watch all the regular usuals. I really love Flame and Fiber with Barbara. I really love uh, Fat Squirrel Speaks. Who doesn't? Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing. What I'm watching non-knitting is we just finished, my husband and I, a couple of things. But on YouTube, there are some reality shows on YouTube. And we watched the Great Gardening Challenge. That was really fun. So it was these uh, gardeners, they would go head to head. So two teams of two people would go head to head on a joint garden in a public space. Um, so one of them was at uh, some park in England. Another one was at for like a, a daycare, adult daycare home for, you know, adult patients. Um, and they would, they would design a garden and then they would pick a winner and then they would, you know, whatever, like a normal reality competition TV show. Uh, but I really liked it. It was different. Um, it was fun. It's nice to see, see some different kinds of things. So that's what we were watching. The Great Gardening Challenge on YouTube. Um, and I'm not really listening to anything because I'm home. So usually I listen to things in the car, but I really haven't been going anywhere. So I haven't listened to anything new, any podcasts or anything like that. So, yes, the elephant, the elephant in the room. Um, COVID-19 has been happening worldwide. Uh, so, yeah, it hit the States. It, I mean, it hit the States a while ago, I think. But this whole thing about social distancing and quarantining and non-essential businesses being shut down and... Yeah, so in Connecticut, uh, we are under what's called stay home, stay safe. Uh, it's not shelter in place because I think shelter in place technically is for like terrorist attacks or something I heard. But anyway, we are under stay home, stay safe. So um, it's this is affecting everybody's life. So I don't really need to go into like all of these big things about what this means for the world or for the country or for whatever. But I can talk a little bit about how it's affecting my life personally. Um, if anyone would care to hear about it, if not, thanks so much for, for, uh, hanging out with us or me for a little while and uh, I'll see you next time. But, um, for those of you who are interested in what's happening in my life personally and how it's affecting me. So as far as me personally, it hasn't really affected me too, too much. I do already work from home. Um, so that has not been an adjustment at all. That part of it, because I already work from home. I do a lot of volunteer work uh, because of my faith, the religion that I'm a part of. But anyway, I do a lot of volunteer work. Um, so that has changed in the sense that it's not how I used to do it. So I have had to alter that a little bit and I'm clearly not doing as much as I used to. But there are still, still some ways I can fulfill that um, while staying at home. So, so that has been a change for me. And then also... Uh, going out and doing things. So, you know, can't go out to eat at restaurants. Takeout is still available, but you can't go out and eat at restaurants. Not that I got my nails done, but can't go get your nails done. Um, I, we, us we usually only go to the grocery store once a week anyway for our weekly shopping. But yes, there were many, many times where we'd run to the store for certain things. Like I have to run out to the store for this or for that. So that has stopped. We really try to get everything that we need and limit our uh, supplemental visits to the grocery store. Um, I have gone to the post office since this whole thing 
started, which I was like, if I show up and there's a bunch of people there, I'm not going to go in, but there was no one else there. And I did this little dance with, <laughs> with the clerk. Um, I would walk up to the counter and, you know, I put the package on the counter and then I would walk back. So they were really maintaining that six feet of dis at least six feet of distancing. So I stepped back and the clerk stepped up to the counter and processed the package. Then she stepped back and I stepped forward to say whether or not there were hazardous materials in it and to verify the address. And then I stepped back and then she, <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. Um, and then obviously you know, washing your hands. When I got back in the car, I have hand sanitizer in my car, hand sanitizer in my purse, trying not to touch anybody um, or touch a lot of different things without washing my hands. And, and yeah, so last week um, I left my house briefly Monday and Tuesday and then I was home Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> I didn't leave the house. I'm trying to think what I did Friday. Friday was raining, so I guess I didn't leave the house either. And I've been on hikes. Um, so my husband and I, we enjoy taking hikes anyway. Um, but, but so we've continued to do that. Um, and then I have not left my house since Sunday. Today's Wednesday. So I'm really trying to maintain. I mean, I, I took a walk down my street with my dog. So I've been outside of my home, but I have not been in the car to travel anywhere. Um, since Sunday. So, um, so yeah, that's how it's affecting me. As far as my husband, he still works. So he works for Pfizer and so he's considered, um, essential. And so he's still working, um, you know, fairly normal hours. I mean, he got out of work a little bit early. They are really trying to, um, you know, people who can work from home are and that kind of thing. Um, but what he does in manufacturing. So, um, but he was able to leave a little early yesterday. So, but as far as like working, he's still working. Um, but that's it. He goes to work and he comes home and that's all, <laughs> that's all he does. So yeah. So that's how it's affecting us. Also, I haven't gone to see my family. So my brother does have an, uh, a weakened immune system. So I have not gone to see him. Um, like I normally do. Um, and the biggest reason is because, you know, my, my husband still goes to work. So he works with other people. It's not a lot of other people, but you never know what that person is doing in their free time. So, um, my husband does have a risk of exposure and by extension, I do too as well. So I'm really trying not to be around anybody because it is possible. I, I have been, it's not highly likely that I've been exposed, but it's possible for sure. So yeah, so I've been watching a lot of podcasts. I've been watching a lot of TV and shows and stuff. Um, work has picked up a little bit shockingly enough in this time. It is going to slow down a little bit um, as far as because medical providers are not seeing, um, they're seeing emergency only. So elective patients they're not seeing. So it will slow down a, a little bit, but uh, yeah, so I'm still working and stuff and, and that's about it. We have plenty of toilet paper. We were able to get toilet paper before the big toilet paper shortage of 2020. <laughs> so we have that. I know that's a big question. Do you have toilet paper? Um, I do. I have plenty of food. We're stocked up. So that's it. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting time um, that we're living in. And uh, it's stressful. There's been times where I have had anxiety about it. And then there's been times where I'm like, well, hey, let's look on the bright side. I have a little more free time. I'm spending all day every day with my dog, which I cannot complain about. Um, so it's kind of, I think, maintaining that balance, balance. Um, you know, I'm not one to pick a word. I know this sounds like a little bit of a digression, but I'm not one to pick a word of the year. A lot of people are like, oh, my word of the year is this on January 1st. Um, I don't pick my word of the year, but for some reason, every year has seemed, the past three years have seemed to have some sort of theme of, of a word that it keeps coming up you know, keeps coming up in my vocabulary. So this year it's been balance. Um, and even more so now. So I think the biggest thing for me anyway, is trying to maintain the balance between, um, appropriate, I mean, giving appropriate weight to the situation and being sensitive to what other people are going through. And yet also maintaining some lightheartedness and not getting too, um, too emotionally upset about it or have too much anxiety about it. So trying to look at these funny memes and laugh about certain things that have happened and how my life has changed and looking on the bright side, 
but I also don't want to downplay the situation because I know that it's affecting many people's lives much more than it is affecting mine. Um, so I also don't want to be flippant about it either. So I think the balance between being serious and being lighthearted about it. So I've been trying to maintain that as well. Um, some things were brought to my attention that I never had to think about before and gratefully, gratefully so I've never had to think about. So some things have come up about how uh, social distancing is probably extremely hard for people in abusive relationships, whether it's marital abuse or, or child abuse or something like that, uh, which I'd never thought about before. And, and I'm kind of glad that that was brought to my attention. I feel like that's a, a little bit of an awareness that I would, you know, that I'd like to have. And, you know, people who have medical conditions who need to have medication or someone needs to come visit them to assist them in certain things. And, and, as a result, have had a risk of exposure. Um, you know, I, nobody comes to my house, nobody needs to come to my house, and I have no need to leave it. So that's definitely a luxury that that I have that, you know, other people don't have. So I think just trying to maintain that balance. This also needs to be a balance of being aware of the situation. And this is just in my own life. I'm not trying to preach or tell anybody how to live their life. But um, for myself, there I've had to maintain a balance between being well informed because I need to know. Um, I need to know what's going on and how to protect myself. And then being overly informed or too informed because things are changing constantly. There's always new information coming out. Um, so you can constantly be, be, be constantly be bombarded with um, what this state or that state is doing or what the president is saying about it or what the uh, uh, medical professionals are saying about it and what to do. And, and this is the first sign. No, this is the first sign. No, you have to be three feet away. No, you have to be six feet away. No, you have to, <laughs> you know, wash your hands. Well, 20, wash your hands for 20 seconds has always been a thing, but um, you know, so there's, there's constant information, constant information. So, you know, do I really need to know the death toll every single day? Maybe not. Maybe some people do. Some people need information to lower their anxiety. The more information they have, the less anxious they are. And some people, the more information they have, the more anxious they are. So I guess knowing, having a self-awareness of what contributes to my anxiety level and, and where I can make changes so that I'm not just sitting in my house freaking out about every little thing. Um, so that's also had to be maintaining balance. Um, I've had some unsolicited information also given to me uh, where someone would text me and tell me something and uh, I've had to I've had to make the decision about like mm, you know that really affects me in a negative way so I have to make sure that you know I can keep appropriate boundaries when it comes to things like that so that's had to be an a that's had that's been an adjustment you know just today though and here I am talking about it but just today I was like, I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I just don't want to talk about it today. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's this constant, like, I can't stop talking about it or other people can't stop talking about it. And, and, and you can't, cause it really, it really does affect your life every day. And every day is new, a new way that it may affect your life. So it is a constant conversation and I think it is necessary. Uh, but today I woke up and I was like, I really don't want to talk about it today. I don't want to hear about it today. I don't want to talk about it today. I just want to kind of live my life. But my life is so different than it was before. In a way, it's not different at all. And in a way, it's completely different. So anyway, anyway, that's that. That's all I have to say about that, which um, isn't true. I'm sure I could talk for hours and hours and hours after. Um, I did just watch the Fat Squirrel Speaks Amy Beth's latest podcast and she saved her little discussion of it till the end. And if you haven't had a chance to watch it, I really, I really liked, I really liked it. It was, it was short and sweet. It was very, it kind of felt a little peaceful. You could tell there were a lot of things that she was thinking about, but, um, it was just a really nice, I think she did a really nice job and I really felt uh, I felt good about, you know, I just felt nice afterwards <laughs> instead of like, ah, um, it was just kind of ended on a nice calm note. I'm not sure if I'm accomplishing the same thing, but I hope that I am. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Linda, please get in touch with me on Ravelry. Congratulations. Um, I'm not afraid to go to the post office if you're not afraid to get a package. So if you are, if you don't want to get the package, please just let me know. Um, you can give me your address, but I will, I will hold off on mailing it. If, if that concerns you, please just let me know. I'll hold off on mailing it until this whole thing has passed. Um, however long that may be. 
but if you are if you are interested in getting the package i am totally fine sending it to you so we'll just be in communication about that and let me know if you guys want to have a cooped up cow maybe i'll do that cooped up cow i i don't love to say cow because you can make anything um uh so i do like mal because you can crochet or you can do any other kind of project that you're doing in your house um but cow sounds so good sometimes with the alliteration. So cooped up cow. Maybe that's a good one. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks so much for watching. It was so good to talk to you. And um, I hopefully will be talking to you soon. Bye.